1 Timothy chapter 4 and uh, verse 11 through 13. And we've been in these verses for two months now. And uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 4, verse 11 through 13. And we, we're going to continue our uh, thing of Be Thou Good as Temple of the Believers in Faith, part number 3. And so this is our third week talking about being a uh, being our example of the believers in faith. Uh, tonight, uh, like I told you, if I had one message to preach before I died, I preach about faith. And you said, "Well, I, 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 what about preach about salvation? Salvation is all about faith. And you can't get saved unless you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ." So if I had met one message to preach, and I knew my last message, I preach about faith. And so I, that's one of my favorite subjects uh, to talk about is faith. So we'll continue our uh, expository preaching and teaching through the book of 1 Timothy. And we're in chapter number 4 tonight and verse 11 through 13. When y'all get there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, these things, which is for, these things command and what? Let no man despise. The word despise means to disordain, to cast off, to, to look down. Uh, or, or, or to have a uh, uh, to have a low regard towards. Uh, is it let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, conversation, charity, and spirit, and faith and purity. Until I come, give attendance to reading, to exaltation, to what? Not to not have a seat on my prayer. Father, we thank you for this message. Thank you for the service about that that we have tonight. Thank you for the message we're about to hear. Lord, thank you for giving us safe travel to Atlanta, uh, to Cabin Harvest Baptist Church and back. Thank you for the, uh, the preaching and the fellowship. Thank you, Lord, that you are glorified. Thank you for reach God to uh, uh, giving me some new energy in Christ. And Father, tonight, I pray that you give me power as I teach your word tonight. I pray, God, that everything you said and done tonight will bring glory to me. Give me Holy Ghost function. I know me from the crown of my head to the so on my feet. I yield myself to you, Holy Ghost. I know I have all of you, but I yield myself so you have all of me. I pray, Holy Ghost, that I be spirit-filled tonight as a preacher, but also I pray that we have some spirit-filled listeners. We pray you're blessed now. Like I say, I love you, God the Father, love you, God the Son, and love you, God the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' person, the church said, Amen. So here tonight, we've been going through the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we've been in verse number 11 through 13 now for over two months. And one thing about the Word of God is the Word of God is so profound, and so the Word of God you can't exhaust it. It's so much truth that can be preached from one verse. That we didn't come up with even many interpretations, but so many truths that can be preached from one verse in the Bible. And so as we've been going through First Timothy here tonight, I mean for the, for the last year, now we're in chapter number 4, we'll be going through verse number 11 through 13 for the last two months. And as I read the word of God here tonight, as I stand before you in the stead of God, being an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I stand tonight, as I see tonight that we say that faith is shaking God in his word. That from Genesis all the way to the Revelation is the whole thing of the Bible is faith. It takes faith to get saved. You can take faith, faith that if you know that you're a sinner, that for all that sin and come short of the glory of God, take faith to believe that verse. It takes faith to say, as it's written, there is none righteous, no matter what. It takes faith to believe that this Bible, the King James Bible, is inspired, infallible, that is preserved the word of God. That it have no, it have, it have no faults in it. It has no error in it. There's a perfect word of God. You just got to believe that God preserved his word like he said he would. You got to believe that by faith that this Bible is God's word. And so then you believe by faith. You got to believe that the Bible said if you die without Christ, by faith you believe that you're going to go to hell because you're a sinner and you deserve the judgment of God. And people say, hey, don't condemn them by the you. You're trying to condemn them, folks. And the Bible says, he that believe it not is condemned already because he believe not in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So a person is already condemned if they don't have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If they haven't repented towards God and put their faith in Jesus Christ and set them as their Savior. And so faith is the whole thing of the Bible. It's all about faith. It's only 1,189 chapters in the Bible. 
It's 66 books in the Bible. It's 31,103 verses in the Bible. It's 789,000 words in the Bible. It's 3.5 million letters in the Bible. I'm going to tell you tonight, it's over 8,000 commands. We ain't coming to 10 commands, but over 8,000 commands in the Word of God. I'm going to tell you tonight, you got to have faith that one day the Bible says, apart from man, wants to die and not the dish the judgment. You got to believe that one day you're going to stand before God Almighty, take faith. You never seen God. You never been to heaven by faith. You got to believe that the word of God is going to stand before God. And the Bible said that every man should be a count to God for himself. So you got to believe that. Knowing that the Bible said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord. Hey, you got to believe that. And you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, by thy word thou shalt be condemned. And by thy word thou shalt be Justify. You gotta believe that that Christ is the same, that He's the only way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. How you gotta have faith that Christ is buried and that He rose again the third day according to the scripture. You gotta believe that you have some faith in the word of God, that the whole thing on the Bible is faith. Hey, hey, the whole thing in the Bible without faith is impossible to please God. You can't even please God without faith. And the Bible I would say whatever not a faith is sin. And so when you don't have faith like you should and I have faith like I should, it's a sin to, to God Almighty. Can I say that we ain't trusting God? We don't believe that God is who we say he is. He's the Lord. He's Jehovah Jireh. And then God will provide. So I gotta trust God. Even though I have some knees, even though the church has some knees, and then we don't know where the money will come from. We gotta believe that Jehovah Jireh, which means that God will provide for himself. See, Jehovah Jireh means God will provide for me. That means Jehovah Jireh, God will provide for himself. And I belong to God, and God belongs to me. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have some faith tonight. I'm going to tell you tonight, we say that Abraham had faith that God, how about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he had faith that God would make him a father of many nations. He had faith that either he, he said he's staring or not at the promise of God with unbelief, but being fully persuaded that he which had promised was all able also to perform that which he promised. So there has a God who promised how believe that you're able to perform it. So he didn't stagger. He didn't go to the left hand. He didn't go to the right hand. He wasn't double-minded. Hey, how about Has Abraham been a double-minded man? He's going to stay with all his ways. He staggered not at the promise of God, but he's been strong in faith and been full of persuaded, giving God glory. Hey, faith bring glory to God. Praise God. I said, having faith in God bring glory to God. That's why the devil, the first thing the devil attacked, he attacked your faith. Because your faith brings glory to God. Why? Because it's faith in God that brings glory to God. And the most, as a Christian tonight, you struggle with your faith. Hey, tonight you write a doubts in your mind. How are you going to make it? How are you going to get through it? How are God going to do it? How you going to know how God going to do it? How do you know how God going to do it? But I believe tonight that God going to do it. So you got to have these strong in faith. And the Bible says that God, hey, that, that, that God, hey, I said that God promised to Abraham that next in this time that you will have a child. And sure enough, old Sarah got pregnant at 90 years old and had a son named Isaac. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Then Isaac had Jacob. And Jacob became a father, a father. He, uh, uh, the 12 tribes is Israel. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. It's like me, God kept his word. Hey, he's gonna make no seed as the dust on the ground as the sand in the river, like the stars in the sky. I'm gonna tell you, did God keep his word? And Abraham, now we got a song called Father Abraham. Oh, Father Abraham. Hey, the Bible said that Abraham was called a friend of God. I believe I call a friend of God because he had a lot of faith in God. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, he's a friend of God. I got a question now. Are you a friend of God tonight? Hey, hey, are you a friend of God tonight? Hey, I'm not sure if you're a child of God. Hey, why is it that why? That Abraham was a friend of God. Because why he believed the Bible said tonight. I got a question for you tonight. Hey, we some more Abraham. Even though the situation looked messed up. Even though it looked impossible, God to do something. Hey, that's when God turn around and do something. When everything was back against the wall, it seemed like it's oh, like it's at the last minute that God comes. But God always comes and God always on time. He's a whole time God. Yes, he is. 
how, how about when you're back against the wall and my back against the wall? That seems like when God come. I said last week that every problem, hey, that's when a miracle take place. I'm going to tell you some problems tonight. You got some things going in your life. You don't know what to do, how to do it. And he said, you, you between a rock and a heartbeat. Now, he said, Pastor, what they do? I just tell you tonight to have some faith in God. To have some faith like Abraham. And God came. And God showed up. And God showed out. And God got all the glory when Sarah had that baby. Abraham got no glory. Hey, Sarah got no glory. Nobody got no glory but God. But in the midst of Abraham, waited. he had a wife. But then he got the things of God and the word of God and told him to have her handmaid named Hagar. And Abraham listened to the voice of his wife. That's the second time in the Bible that man listened to the wife and caused some trouble. He out and listened to his wife and caused all men to be sinner. And, he, and, Adam, and Abraham listened to Sarah and caused the world to be in trouble. And now she had a son named Ishmael by, by Hagar. And Ishmael is a, with a tribe of the mother come from. And Ishmael was she God's I'm a blessed. He said, go back and submit to the wings of your hand of your, your mistress. Then he told Hannah, he said, I'll bless your seed. And God I have blessed her seed. He said, Pastor, how wise so many months, but God called Hannah in the book of Jesus, I'm gonna bless your seed. They will be exceedingly blessed. And so a lot of Baptists are mad at the Muslim. But God told the Muslim, even back in Jesus, I'm gonna bless it. And that's why the Muslim is fully they multiplying and they recruiting now. And there's a lot of them I'm gonna tell you tonight. Hey, that Sarah didn't have a lot of faith in God. Matter of fact, she laughed at God when God sent that angel to tell her that she's going to have a baby. And she laughed at God. I'm going to tell you tonight, some of y'all laughing at God. God trying to tell you something. He says, too funny. Now, I just don't believe that God can do it. I'm going to tell you that God can take nothing and make something. I think God can take something and make something. Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight, I don't know where you are in your faith tonight. I don't know what your struggle is tonight. But please don't be a Sarah. Please don't bring a Haggai in your life. And Haggai, that's why I'm going to birth a, a seed that you're going to regret that you ever sowed. I'm going to tell you, sin promises more than it gives. Listen to me. I said, sin promises more than it gives. It takes you farther you want to go. And it leaves you worse off than you were before. And time had Haggai had that baby. And the Bible said that she despised Sarah. And Sarah despised her. And Sarah got what she wanted. And But when she died, she didn't want it. And that's what happened when we don't wait on God. We get something that we thought we wanted. But time we get it. We realize. I we didn't want it. How many came to bless you? Just to wait on the Lord and be a good curse. I say wait on the Lord. I'm going to tell you tonight. I you better wait on God. Don't put break a hand out of your life and start compromising what God has already told you. Don't compromise with hand out. Don't compromise with hand out. I don't know who your handmaid is. I don't know who you're trying to make a deal with tonight. And you're trying to go out on your own and get something that God don't want you to have. It always will come back and backfire you. Hey, why not God ever tell you to have it that way? I'm going to tell you that by so that faith let patience have a perfect work out. Let faith, man, let God, let, let us be patient tonight. Hey, how many people let us be patient tonight? We don't want to wait on God. I don't know about you, it's hard to wait on God sometimes. But I'd rather wait on God and mess around and work with Israel. And then Israel turn around and be my enemy. I don't know about you, let's wait on God. Let's give some glory to God tonight. I said faith is taking God and his word and the heart of Rahab. To God and His Word. And guess what happened? She was spared. Her father was spared. Her mother was spared. Her brother was spared. Her man was spared. Because she believed that the message was sent from God. She believed that God was the God of Abraham. He's the God of Isaac. He's the God of Jacob. He, she said, when we heard about how God spread the Red Sea, she said, our heart did nothing in us. She said, we were discouraged. 
She said, I know God has sent y'all here. I know that God about to take Jericho over. I know that God about to give y'all the city. She said, but I believe that God about to give y'all the city. But please don't forget about me. They said, okay, if you got faith, them from God, I want you to put a cold out the window. So when we come back, we'll know where you live. And them two spies. And when the two men went back and told and told uh, and told uh, Joshua. Joshua means Jehovah is salvation. I said Joshua means that Jehovah is salvation. And they went back and told Joshua that they got a lady named Rahab. How she hid the messenger. How she plotted and told him to go here and go there for a certain period of time. And when Joshua told that army to go to Jericho and destroy that city, he said, I wish I'd tell y'all something. Don't forget about calling Rahab. Hey, don't forget about Rahab. You remember you told her hey, that she's going to despair. Now, I'm not going to get spared. I said, Jehovah. Hey, Joshua means Jehovah is our mission. And Jesus Christ told the people, hey, don't forget God's word. I'm going to tell you, that what Jesus do to God. Hey, God, you remember you told Charles. Hey, you remember you told the believers. You remember you told the saints in the word of God. Hey, why does Joshua mean that Jehovah is our mission? And Jesus, Jehovah is our mission. Turn to God the Father and say, don't forget your word that you told your people. I don't know about you. I did a sign about that. And the Bible said that Jesus is making intercession for us. That he's in the presence of God right now. Making intercession for us. He on our behalf. And, and telling God what his word said. I don't know about you. I get excited about that. I don't know about you. It made me want to have a little more faith. I got a question for you tonight. Where is your faith tonight? Is your faith down in the dust? Do you believe that God can do what he said to do? They have God promise for something. That is one thing you do. You can lean on the promise of God. And when you lean on the promise of God, I promise you won't break them. I'll say it again. You can lean on the promise of God. You can't break the promise of God by leaning on them. I don't know about you. I'm going to lean on them. I'm going to stand on them. Promise of God. I don't know about you tonight. What are you standing on? Why are you leaning on? How my faith is nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I cannot trust my sweetest son. I'm loud and trust in Jesus' name. I'm standing on that firm foundation. I'm standing on that rock. So when that storm comes, and then I'm be standing, I'm standing strong when that storm comes. And I'm standing on that rock. And that rock. It's Christ. I don't know about you. Hey, when you start having faith, people look at you weird and they start talking to you like a prayer. But I believe God. I believe God. How do I do that? How do I believe God? How are you strong in faith? Amen. Amen. That's good. What's your favorite tonight? What's your favorite tonight? What are you on your faith? And tonight, y'all don't have to all out. I only got one truth from the Word of God about be our example of believers in faith. What I'm saying, y'all, other people are watching us with our faith. They're watching us. They want to see what we're going to do with it. They want to see what we're going to do with your faith. They say you trust God. You tell them you trust God and you believe that God going to do what He say He do. He going to do. Do you really? Do you who tonight? Ask yourself. Do you really believe that God can do what He say He do? So then why we get stressed out? Why we get depressed? Why we get diving out? Well, that means that we ain't trusting God. I'm in the can tonight. If you all stressed out, if you all depressed out, that's a sign right there that you ain't trusting God. That you're looking at your situation and you're looking at your circumstance and you're looking at what's going on around you. Instead of looking up and you're looking around on here to tell you tonight, too many Christians are stressed out, disturbed, and, and depressed. How can a Christian be depressed? How can a Christian, a Christian be disturbed? How can a Christian be stressed out? Because they ain't looking to the healers from which come to their help. They help come from the Lord, which made the heaven and earth. They ain't looking to the hills. They looking at the mountain and they looking at the valley. They say, well, not. I'm here to tell y'all something tonight. The average Christian, you have never spent most of your life on a mountain. Has at the top of the mountain nothing grow. I don't know if y'all know about that or not. It nothing grow on the mountain. Everything grow in the valley. And that's why David said, I walk through the valley. He said, I walk up on the mountain. He said, I walk through the valley. A shot of death. I'm here to tell you tonight. Everything grows in the valley. Nothing. Go on the mountain. And that's why it seems like most of my life I've been saved. I've been in 
the valley. Do you count it? Amen. I do feel like you've been in the valley since you've been saved. It seems like everything been going wrong. It seems like nothing going right. God, that's what we spent most of our life. We spent in the valley so we can grow in our faith in God. We can grow in our faith towards God. We can look to God and we look up. I'm going to tell you tonight. Where is your faith tonight? Amen. Where's your faith? Now, I said, what's your faith tonight? Man, I'm just stressed out, Pastor. Now, I don't know what's wrong. I'm stressed out. I'm going to tell you what's wrong. You ain't got no faith. You, you trust in you. <laughs> Do you know uh, what sin does? Sin comes with some repercussion. If I disobey God's word, that means I'm sinning, right? And so sin has some problem with that. And tonight I'm here to tell you, a lot of Christians have a lack of faith. I'm going to say tonight, most Christian brothers here have miss out on their blessing. Time God might have opened the door for them. Amen. That's true. Huh? Yeah. And people in my mind, she said, baby, I tell her all the time, Mrs. Hammond, I can't go nowhere. I said, I leave Greenville, I'm scared that God's going to pull down all the blessings. I said, I don't want to leave here. And I'm not going to all leave doors. I didn't go all in here by Jesus. And time I leave, another man come behind me and reap my harvest. He had not sold anything, but he didn't reap my harvest. And so I've been going all this soil. I've been going all this soil. I'm just going to stay around till the harvest time comes. I just have faith that you keep sowing seeds. You'll get a harvest one day. Amen. And that's why I just keep going when the crowd get hot. I keep calling when the crowd get low. And I just believe God that He shall on this rock. I build my church in the gates of hell will I prevail against it. I just believe God that when you do things God way, and God always bless us. And we preach the book here. And we preach the blood here. And we preach the blessed hope. And we're so in the church. And we just are the small in numbers. And we support Latin missionaries. And we just a small church. Hey, we got a jail minister. We got a prison minister. And we're about to go into public schools. I just believe that God is not unrighteous to forget our works that we have done in this night. I just believe that one day that God going to reward those that did not seek him. I'm going to tell you tonight. Hey, we have some faith that some better days is coming ahead. Hey, we have some faith that God will open the ones of heaven and pour out some blessings. And so we'll have room enough to proceed that how I know about you. I claim that in the name of Jesus. I lean on Jesus. I lean on the promise. I stand on the promise. I rest on the promise. Because it's a pillar in the ground of truth. I don't know what you're standing on tonight. I don't know what you're leaning on tonight. I don't know what your faith is in tonight. But I'm here to tell you how you gotta have a fight in God. Huh? Uh huh. And you remember what happened and you'll get discouraged. Right. And you'll quit like everybody else done. That's right. That's true. You know why people quit? They don't believe God, they got a little bit more. Mm hmm. They think they, they can do a better job than God. That's true. Like Sarah did. She thought she could help God out. And she said, Go get my hand made right there. I think I'm going help you out. Mm -hmm. God, too slow. God ain't coming fast enough. Mm -hmm. So she said, let me help God out. I'm going to let y'all know God don't need help. He ain't in a wheelchair, no, he's laying on the lane on blind. Hey, right. God ain't, he ain't paralyzed. He don't need no help. I said, God don't need no help. David said, I'm God will live on the earth for which coming help. Now David said, I will look up to the heaven. He ain't said, God will look down. He said, I will look to the heaven because my help come from the Lord. You never see in the Bible God said help come from earth. Hey, God don't need no help. Hey, he had this way. Hey, God ain't retarded. Hey, God ain't swallowing at the mouth. Hey, God ain't crying. Hey, God ain't crippled. Hey, God don't need no help. God wants to be God. And the scripture let God be God. We're not too many people trying to help God. Be God. Let God be God tonight. And you do a good job of being God. I've been trying to be God before. And it didn't help me at all. I 
not that it hurt me. And the Bible said, there's only one God and there's one Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm going to tell you, there's not two gods. Yeah, hey, he's not. Hey, he's not. Hey, this is the one God. He's a triune God. He's God alone. And not him. He's no heavenly God. Trying to help God be God alone. That was the expression that depressed me. Right. Trying to help God be God. That was the stress come from. Trying to get God. Well, you be trying to help. You be trying to do a job that God never called you to do. I'm going to move on my truth. Like right now, I'm going to tell, tell you what most Christians do. I said we as Christians do. Listen, right now, by His life, you tell me right now, hey, what I want you to do right now, y'all. I want y'all to dig in this church, in this in the sanctuary. I want y'all to dig all the way down until you find some gold. And you can keep digging and keep digging. He said, man, pass in on glass and all, keep digging. And you come back here the next day. Come back up there the next day. Come, instead of digging, he said, Pastor, man, ain't no gold. I said, yes, it is. Keep digging. You want to go get frustrated? You're going to get stressed out? Because I have sent you on a wild goose race. I have sent you on a, 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 a take that don't exist. I, I have sent you to a place that's no gold over there. So we have to get frustrated. You get stressed out. You get depressed. You get, why? Because you're trying to find something don't exist. And, and that's what a lot of Christians are doing. You're trying to stay. You're trying to find something don't exist. You're trying to find your faith in yourself. Huh? And try to find of find faith in God. And you're depressed. You're stressed out. Wow. And you're trying to do a job. And, and your way ain't working. And you still trying to do it your way. And your way ain't working. You're getting anger and anger. You're getting bitter and bitter. You're getting mad and mad. You're getting frustrated and frustrated. You're getting disturbed and disturbed. Now you're flipping off at people. Now you're mad at everybody. Now you're looking sad because you're trying to do a job in your way instead of letting God do it his way. Amen. 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 Ain't that right? Amen. Tonight. If you don't watch 
watching. You're going to stop coming to you and you don't watch it. You're going to stop coming to church too and you don't watch it. Your faith going to start fading away. They will say, why are you going to church? I've been going to church all the time. ain't doing that. I've been paying my tithes and all here. ain't doing that. I've been trying to do right and it seems like nothing going right. I'm going to tell you not. Hey, faith. It's a faith in God. You have to be patient towards God. You have to be patient with God like God is patient with us. How God is patient towards us. We want God to be long suffering towards us, but we want to be long suffering with God. Amen. Huh? We thank God. I, I hear people say, I thank God He's so long suffering. Why are we long suffering with Him? Mm. Well, I'm so bad that God pays for me, so why would we be patient with God? Right. That's what faith is, being patient with God. And let God do what God sees fit. I'm moving on with this, y'all. I, 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 I've been out, we've been out of your faith for four years. Every week for four years straight. We've been out of your faith April 9th, 2013. So we've been out of your for 38 months. I mean, uh, 50 months straight. Because 12 months of the year, we've been for four years and two months. We've been out of your for 50 months straight. 52 times, hey, fact, 52 times 4 is 208 weeks. Then you add two more months to that. Hey, guess what that is? That's 216 weeks. Faith are not going on doors. Faith are sowing seeds. And it seems like the harvest, like the, it's like the seed that's born in the ground ain't coming up. Hey, but I believe, I see the seed. I see the, I see the harvest come. I see it. I see the harvest. That's that faith. I can't see the harvest, but I see it though. Oh, I'm saying it. I said, I can't see the harvest either, but I sold it, see it, see it. I can see it tonight. I'm going to tell you tonight. What is the faith? Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say this, y'all. We'll be done with coming up now. This has to be out to now. Amen. Because I know how I feel to do right this night and get no results. I know I feel it's like doing the best you can to do right. That's like nothing happening good for you. I understand. I understand. I understand trying to do right, man. It's like that going right. I know. I, I'm, I, I'm dead or not. I know. Yes. Man, I look out like, boy, where everybody at tonight? I know how to do right. You don't know all you can to serve God and seem like you're hitting a brick wall. It's like you're trying to do right. It's like you're hitting a brick wall. Like you ain't going nowhere. Yes. Matter of fact, it would serve God sometimes. It's like you go, like God taking you back. Hmm. You're like, well, you're, so the faith come in, like, well, God take me backwards. And that means that God, when he put me in pride, he, and me going forward by myself, it still is quicker than God go back, but then go forward. God still passed me. Right. I said, going backwards, God, it's still going in me. It's better I'm going back with God and going forward with the devil. Right. Now I'm going forward with the devil, going back forward with your faith. Hello? I say, nah, I'm, 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 you better I'm going back with God and going forward by yourself. Because mm -hmm. sometimes God says, be still and know that I'm the what? So being still a lot of times is better moving. The Bible tells us to stand strong in the Lord and the power of the might. God will tell us to go forward and stand. Sometimes it's good to say that. How long? That's faith. Amen. And so tonight, I know this is the truth. I have to got one truth in this. Our lack of faith in the Word of God can limit God from doing big miracles in our lives. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Our lack of faith in the Word of God can limit God from doing miracles in our lives. Amen. So our lack of faith in the Word of God will limit God from doing what God wants to do. And so how big your faith is will determine how big a miracle God does. And so today, we ain't seen God do a lot of miracles. We don't got faith that God can do it. People say, well, $177,000? Where y'all gonna get that from in 2019? I don't know how we got this. I don't know how we got 60000 
y'all with me right here? 13. Man, I want to help us tonight, church. God want to do something here at King James Bible Baptist Church. So I mean by the church, that means not the building. He want to do something in our life. We are the church. And God want to do something in our life as a church. But we got to believe that he can do something big. Amen. I got a question for you. Hey, young man, do you believe that God is in your version? Huh? Hey, young lady, how? Huh? Hey, young lady, do you believe that God is in your version? You said, well, I don't believe God in that way. He won't do it, man. <laughs> Huh? Some people say there's no good man out there. And that's why they got a solid man on the couch. Ah. Hey, that's why they got a hormone they mess around with. And they say there's no good man as this. So God said, if you don't need no good man as this, I ain't going to send you one. And so they go their whole life. I'm going from man to man, sleeping with woman to woman. And it says no good women. And there's no good men. And so that's why God never sent it to them. Because they got they, they did it back up. No good man out there. What well, you won't find? God ain't gonna see one day, lady. Man, there ain't no version out there. What well, God ain't gonna see your version? Like a woman that got had a hundred minutes. Got that what you believe? Every woman like that. So that you want to believe, you gonna get that what you're gonna receive. The Bible said, when you pray, believe, and you shall receive. Hey, when you pray, believe, and you shall receive. Amen. Hey, I say this: when you pray, believe, you shall receive. Some of y'all don't believe when you pray. When you pray, some of y'all don't believe your own prayer. You pray it in doubts. And then I will say to you, are you praying with your faith? He said, that man should receive nothing of God. He said, I ain't received nothing from God. I'm going to tell you why. Because you don't believe what you pray in yourself. And so how God will answer a prayer when you pray it in doubt. I'm going to tell you tonight, God ain't the problem. The same yesterday and today and forever. If he did miracles in the Old Testament, I still believe that he can do some miracles in 2017. Amen. Do y'all believe that? Amen. Do y'all believe that God can take it from the hood and do something big in your life? Uh oh, the family getting your business now. Do you think God can take you from the hood like he did me? Amen. And do something big in your life? Huh? Uh-oh, boy, now I'm getting quiet. I'm quiet. How sad do you believe that God can take you from the hood and do something big in your life? That way, everywhere you go, that people know you. Not because of you. Did I know a lot of people in Georgia last night? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'm from Holland there, 22,000 people. But here's when I go to come up, how am I back to Bible College, no coming, people know me? Okay. In Oklahoma City, I'm from Holland there, Mississippi, 2,000 people. I go to California, people know me. Go to Texas, people know me. I go to Louisiana, people know me. Go to Florida, people know me. Huh? How come on now? People in New York know me. People in West Virginia didn't know me. People in Pennsylvania didn't know me. People in Arkansas know me. People in Georgia didn't know me. Huh? People in South Dakota, North Dakota know me. People in my town know me. Come on, people in Iowa, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin. Huh? I'm gonna people, people, oh, come on now. I said tonight that you believe in God can take from the hood.
They told me, Pastor, oh man, God can, can use me. He ain't neither. He ain't used me. Well, Pastor, you understand where I come from. I don't know why I can never be God. And that's why you're still in it. Brother, that's why you're still in it. And I don't think God, well, Pastor, I'm in sin. And I don't think God can bring me out. Well, He won't bring you out. You don't stay, you don't believe he can bring you out. And so he'll let you stay as going. You don't believe God can. You don't believe God can tonight. I said, some of y'all don't believe that God can tonight. Hey, you don't believe that God can use. Some of y'all don't believe that God can use tonight. And that's why he won't use you. Amen. Matthew chapter, say Matthew chapter 13, verse number 15. We got to say amen. Amen. I say our lack of faith in the word of God can what? Limit God from doing big miracles in our world. Right. So what the Bible says in St. Matthew chapter 13 verse 53. St. Matthew chapter 13 verse 53. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed what? And when he was coming to his own what? Don't forget his own country. He told them in the synagogue, in some of them they were astonished and said, Whence have this man this wisdom? And these mighty what? Is not this the copper son? Is not his mother called Mary? His brother James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? Not Judas Issachar, but Judas. Right. Which means he changed. In the book of Jude, Judas changed the name from Judas to Jude. So it's not a Jew that betrayed Jesus. And verse 5 says, And his sisters, are they not all with us? And which didn't have this man all these what? And they were offended. Huh? Right. I said they were what? Offended. That's the thing about that. They were offended in him, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, said his own country, his own what? And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Amen. See, they were too familiar with Jesus. Did you not know his, his father named Joseph? The copper son fought about I guess they father when Joseph father named God. They said, not his mother with us, his sister. They began to name all his sisters, his brothers, and, and they ain't called his sister's name. He said, How then did he know all these things? They said, Man, that man from the he from around here. See, Jesus went back to Nazareth. I don't have such cash the printer, did miracles. But now he come back to his own country, and I don't believe that Jesus is the Lord. Right. And so Jesus said, You don't believe that I am who I am, in so many words. He said, Well, I don't care what I'm going to do then, buddies. I'm not going to do many what? Miracles there. What hindered God from moving? What hindered God from moving in a lack of faith? In the word of God, the Bible said that Jesus, he didn't do many mighty works then because of that unbelief. I'm convinced tonight that a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians, I'm not seeing God work in their lives. They ain't seen God to do a lot through miracles. They ain't seen the hand of God. They ain't really seen the power of God because of their lack of faith towards God. And so God said, your little faith gonna call me to do a little work. He said, you got big faith. I do some big works. And so your faith tonight is limited. God, from God, the work of God. And so don't blame God for the miracle you ain't seen. It's God, not the cause. It's your lack of faith towards God why God not working. Amen. Mm. Mm. So people say, well, I ain't seen God work like that. Is God the problem? And the Bible said he did not many mighty works there because they honor what? Believe. So why we ain't seen God working our churches no more like we should? And the members and the pastors along the same don't need God to do it. Some of y'all don't need God to do this deal now. Some of y'all can't see it. Some of y'all can't see the, the, all the yellow bus around the park line. We've got park line all back there with bus park right there. Some of y'all can't see that. Some of y'all can't see the park, the, 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 the duplex for a missionary to come in, or people like Brother Hills come in and come work for a Sunday out of place. Some of y'all can't see that. Some of y'all can't see the Christian school on the property. Some of y'all can't see the jail on the problem. Some of y'all can't see it. And so there were some of y'all won't see it. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people go and they won't see it because they don't believe it. But there'll be some people come in and say, I believe God will be some big King J. 
Jake Bible back. Hey, don't forget, Brother Henderson, that the older folks, they're not going to the land, the promised land. They ain't going to the land of promise. They ain't leave God. And for those that were 20 years and younger, got a chance to see uh, the promised land. Because the older folks, they believe in God. They ain't believe that God can let them see that promised land. He let them see a little bit of it, but they never cross over. I'm going to tell you tonight, uh, a lot of Christians, uh, we ain't seeing God do many and mighty works. Uh, we ain't seeing the power of God. We ain't seeing some miracles take place like God want to do. Because they have a lack of faith in the word of God. Huh? So the Bible, he ain't give me the mighty word there because they don't really believe. Mm-hmm. Because they don't believe. Amen. Imagine when you go to heaven and God said, I'm going to bring you this room here and God should all the you know, blessings. You're like, God, oh, who, who, who blessed me? Why all this? This deed gifts this room. God said, all the gifts, them go give. Mm-hmm. But you never see because he didn't believe them. God said, all these gifts. You're like, God, oh, wow. God said, I have for you, but you didn't believe I did just so I didn't give them to you. Mm. Wow. So some of y'all don't believe it now. I know y'all don't. Y'all are struggling. It's just a struggle in your, in your mind what the God can do. And the devil got you tricked, you got to set tricked, and God can't do that with you. And you always be in a situation, and some of y'all believe that. Some of y'all are convinced that you would never be no more much you are today. And you say, well, this is how this is. I'm just, I'm just I'm always be this. I'm always be that. And I can't do nothing about it. My dad like that. My mama like that. My grandma like that. My friend like that. My cousin like that. My brother like that. My uncle like that. And pastor, I can't. Hey, my life family like that. So I just say, he'll be like, like, like that too, Pastor. Well, you'll be all, you'll always be like that too. And that was you believe. You don't believe like that. You believe like that. Let's move on, y'all. We'll be done with this. Go 
Go to Psalm chapter 78. Psalm chapter 78. Are y'all with me tonight? You know why people, I told y'all, I said, you know why people don't stop shacking up for this? Because they don't feel like they can make it without that man in the house. And that man don't feel like he can make it without the woman. I'd have to tell you, boy, Pastor, if I, if I move out, man, she might bring another man in. You don't need to marry her then if you think like that. Nah, uh, Pastor, I don't want to do that because if I move out, she might lose my business. Lack of faith. Lack of faith. You know why men, women, women and men sell for less? Because I don't believe there's nobody that's better out there. They think that's all somebody out there. He got the best thing out there. Huh. And some men say she got to be the best thing out there. Boy, if y'all know what I know and see what I have seen, boy, y'all, boy, if you can see what I have seen, I have seen some beautiful women out there, beautiful single, looking for a godly man. Sure is. I have seen some nice little men. Worker man, scripture man, love by love church virgins, waiting wait on God, they trying to find a wife. And you got these women trying to give this no good man. I'm talking about virgins out there. Men that love God, love church. <coughs> but women say, well, ain't that man don't exist. Well, you won't get him. So people set up a less. Why don't you set up a less and God won't give you his best? Right. But it takes faith to believe that. So your lack of faith of where God won't do it, God won't do it, and God showed us he won't do it, because he didn't do many of my works of Nazareth, because they're unbelief. He said he didn't do many of my works because they're unbelief. They ain't going to the promised land because they're unbelief. Amen. Unbelief stopped them from going to the promised land. Amen. They never did either. Hmm. Never seen all the blessings. All, they never went into it. They got a little glimpse. And some of y'all don't see a little glimpse of what God had. I mean, that's about it. Because you, you don't go all the way, you don't believe God to take that far. Right. Tonight. Sammy, y'all there with me tonight? Come on, y'all. I'm going to hurry up with this. It's last time verse. Psalm chapter 7, verse number 1. Give ear, O my people, to my what? Oh. Incline your ears to the words of my what? Mouth. Uh oh, this is God understanding. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my what? Mouth. So God said, by listening to what I'm saying from my mouth and from my words. He said, by believe it. Let's go to verse number six. The Bible said that the generation to come ain't know what. Yeah. Even to the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their what? Uh oh. And they might set their hope in who? God. Uh oh. And not forget the works of who? God. But keep his what? Amen. And might not be as their father, a stubborn, rebellious what? Generation. A generation that set not their heart alright, whose spirit was not steadfast with who? God. Uh oh. And the children of Ephraim. Huh? I'm not listening. The children of what? Ephraim. Ephraim. You know the word Ephraim mean? It means, it means, it means, down this fruit. So let's hold on. So he said, he said, he said, let me say, and for it, it, if the children of Ephraim being armed, carrying bowls, turn back in the day of what? God. <laughs> Why would they turn back in the day of battle when Ephraim mean down this fruit? Mm. Verse 10. They kept not the coming of God and refused to walk in his word. Oh. And forgot his words and his wonder that he has shown them. And marvelous things that he in their sight and all their father in the land of what? Egypt. And what? Zohar. I'm going to have y'all to stop here. The word, don't tell you what Egypt is. Egypt is located northeast of Africa. And Egypt, the Bible, is a picture of the world. Right. So it's northeast of Africa. And it's a, it's a lower part of Egypt. But listen to me now, let's go on up He said, in the land of what? Zohar. And I look at the word of Zohar, and I never looked it up before, but it actually be a place of departure in the lower parts of Egypt. And so here, God said, Mark did he in the sight of the in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zohar. He said, I did miracles in the lowest part of Egypt. He said, I did miracles in an unlikely place. And they still forgot God. Look what the Bible says in verse 13. He divided the sea and called them to pass through. He made the water to stand as a what? So when they went to the, uh, the Red Sea, God put the water, he had the water go up on like a wall. And they walked straight through the Red Sea. They seen all that. But they still had a lack of faith in God. I said they, they seen how God had the water like a heap. And how God had like a wall. How he walked through the water. It's the Red Sea. And the Pharaoh and his army tried to do it. And they drowned it. Right. And they seen all that. They seen how God provided for them and did move in the land of Zoe and the field of Zoe and the lower part of 
of Israel. They see God divide the sheep. They see how God, how they pass through the sheep. Look at verse 14 said, In the daytime also he laid them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of what? So they had a pillar of fire by day, brother Jamar Hamilton, and a pillar of fire by night. And they seen all that. They seen how God led them in the wilderness. They seen how God gave them light. Like God was a left to their feet uh, and a life to their path. They seen all these miracles slip go now. In verse 15, he cleaved the rocks in the wood. And gave them drinks out of the great beast. Death. Hey, brother, hey, now, they see how God gave them water from the rock. Right. How is no water in the wilderness? It's no food in the wilderness. The wilderness will have nothing like it, but God provide for them from the heat of the rocks. How God played the rocks and gave them water from the cleft of the rocks. Verse 16. He brought stream also out of the wood. And caused water to run down like wood. God took water. And God here, I spoke to the rock. And the rock gushed out with water like it's a river flow. What else they need to see? He got into the Red Sea. Put a cloud by day, put a cloud by night. And God took a rock. And that water came out like it's a river, water river, a river, a water river. Like nothing like this water from river coming out of the rock. Right. Look at the Bible said. Mm. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the most high in the world. Mm. What I learned, Brother Henderson, well, since I've been a great man, the more God did for people, the more they sin against him. Sure. I sin God be blessed with his church. And now let it turn down back on God. Amen. I sin him down and out. Without jobs. How to see them living old shacks. How to see them homeless. And God brought them out. And the more miracles God did, and they still see it yet more and more. And they proud of the sin. They boast about it. That's true. And so is the public they see it. That's true. Out of what God brought them from. Brought them from out of the mire of clay. More God blessed them, the more they see it. Don't it sound good? I don't have a district out of sin to put down in the house. Many families with nothing. God bring them out and they leave the church. The people of God was enlightened and the people of the devil was enormous. 
And I'm asking God, can you further a pay when with us? Some of y'all seen God do miracles. Hey, you just seen God do miracles in your life. Hey, you just seen God do some spiritual rest in your life. You just seen how God provided in your life. You just seen how God done miracles. And now today you still asking God, can you further a pay when with us? I always can see some of y'all still down there. And this old pastor doing something undo. I don't see him God down there. And sometimes I still doubt God. Can you go out and look at this one? I think that's crazy. <laughs> God, you pay the right bill this one. And God will pay the right bill for, for, for 50 months. Mm-hmm. And still sometimes, Lord, you're going to pay the right bill during 14, 15 this month, Lord. We can pay for 50, we can pay for 50 straight months. Mm-hmm. And trust me, to be on fire, maybe the land and the beautiful building, the best day with the green one. And I still have to God, Lord, can you find our table with us? Gave us a van from New Mexico. Now I'm still wondering sometimes, God, can you find the table? And it would man, that's, man, that's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. You do that sometimes too, because we the same God. Do real, but we still ask God, can you find the table in the wood? Amen. Now, the question is not can you find the table in the woods? Can we trust him to find the table in the woods? Last verse, I'll be done. Verse number 41. Yet they turn back and tempt God and limit the Holy One to what? Israel. The truth was this our lack of faith in the Word of God can limit. God are doing miracles in our life. And the Bible says before, and yet they turn back and tempt God and limit the Holy One of blood. Yes, and that's what you're not even turn back. You're in church tonight. Your body is much hard back. Some of y'all hard in here tonight. Let's be real. You said, Pastor, you don't know about the heart. <laughs> the Bible says, yet they turn back and tempt God and limit the Holy One of blood. Some of y'all's body is much hard in here. Some of y'all believe y'all come to church and hoping that it's like a gender where if I come to church, maybe God will bless me. People go to church all the time. Well, and that's why I'm like, when God don't bless me, stop coming. <laughs> they stop coming when God don't bless me. They stop tithing when God don't bless their finances. They stop getting to miss Hey, they stop going so with it. And they turn back from God. And they live in the Holy One of Israel. Is that you tonight? It's just a matter of time that you saw Satan come out. Okay, you're going to turn back. You're going to live in the Holy One of Israel. You're going you're gonna to tell them this. I tried church. I, I tried time. I tried anything, but it didn't work out. I, I ain't trying church. I ain't trying time. I'm going to do a time now. So if God don't give me, if God don't bless me no more in my life, I'm still going to serve God. Because I can see what he's done in the past. Uh, I can see what God has done in my life. I got a question for you. How do you see God move tonight? How do you see God move some miracles tonight? How do you see God do some big things in your life? You said, Pastor, I ain't seeing God move. I ain't seeing no miracles. I'm going to tell you why. Because you have a lack of faith in the word of God. And your lack of faith can limit God from doing miracles in your life. Now, y'all want to say it? Your lack of faith can hinder God from doing miracles.